Yo, people, yo, people. So the debate about self-checkout tills has been revitalized after Asda and Morrison's announced that they're going to be focusing on putting more staff on the actual checkout tills. And the reason I want to talk about this is because there are actually wider implications to this discussion that are not immediately obvious, right, but are very important nonetheless. But first, let's have a listen to this woman on Talk TV explain why she's opposed to the self-checkout tills. Problem with going shopping these days and the problem with self-service, the problem with uh, do-it-yourself tills, the problem with no staff and the problem with too many staff and the problem with shoplifting. Mary, um, a very good morning to you. And I know that we normally talk to you about what's going on in Ukraine and perhaps what's in the mind of Vladimir Putin. Uh, but on this occasion, uh, I think you've made a really interesting point in The Spectator about um, the dynamic and, and the change of that dynamic in our local, particularly mini supermarkets. Mm. Yes, I mean, I was I was really struck by the current sort of hue and cry about shoplifting and mm. saying, you know, this is a colossal epidemic. Um, and nobody actually really drawing any um, conclusion mm. about the introduction everywhere now of self-service tills to the point where there are almost no serve tills at all. Yeah. No tills where you can actually go and find a human being to interact with, you mean? Yes, and the thing is that they're so much better at it. You know, on the rare occasion that you actually find some uh, a tool with somebody mm. behind it, you know, they get through your shopping absolutely. You no, know, they know where to look for the barcodes. They put the stuff through. Um, the best ones even pick out the heavy stuff to go in your basket first. You can pack as they put it through. It's a million times more efficient. I mean, they just seem to be the. the, the when the first self-service tills were introduced, it just seemed to me that they were passing on the time and wage costs of their staff onto the consumer. So there you go, there you go. That's what a lot of the people who are opposed to the self-service checkout tills really don't like, is they think that they are used as a way for companies to pass on cost onto the consumer to, to make you do all the work. And I mean, you can see by the title of the video that she's going to touch on something similar later, but you have to wonder why it is that you get charged the same amount if you use the self-checkout till as opposed to if you use the normal checkout tills, right? Because the thing is this, right? Presumably, staff costs are included in the pricing whenever you go and buy something at, say, Asda. If it turns out that you actually don't need to pay any cashiers because no one's using them because everybody's using the self-checkout tills, then why exactly are my prices still the same? Because I'm doing some of the work here. So surely the price should go down. I do want to touch on what she said because I think it's kind of wrong. She says it's way more efficient for people to use the cashier till. No, it is not really. For big shops, yes, it is, right? If you're, if you're getting a big shop, it can be. But generally speaking, no, it's not. If you're somebody who's not buying a lot, self-service checkout tools are much, much better, right? Much better. Because you don't have to wait in line behind somebody who's got a trolley full of £100 worth of goods. On top of that, even if you do have that big trolley full, right, it can still be more convenient to use the self-checkout tills because of the massive queues. But this is the thing, right? The massive queues are in a way artificial because they are created by these companies, right? Because they want to take the cashiers and put them towards something else, right? What they do is they you, you always end up in a situation where there's basically no cashiers there. There's like one or two lines open. And so it creates these massive queues, right? Whereas if you stopped incentivizing so heavily the self-checkout tills, there'd be more people at the tills, hence why there wouldn't be as much of a queue. But that's kind of the basic stuff down. There are bigger issues at play here that a lot of people don't see. It's got to do with the robots, people. I'm going to talk about the robots. Because this is kind of, it kind of symbolizes to me, maybe I'm just overthinking things. I'm overcomplicating it. It just symbolizes to me how a lot of people have decided to replace interactions with human beings in their lives with interactions with robots and electronics, right? She's like, this woman, I think she makes a big mistake here, right? She, she suggests that, like, it's a positive for a lot of people to interact with a human. When it turns out that yeah, you'd be surprised, a lot of people, right, because they become so addicted to their phones and their screens, Right, and they become very antisocial. They don't want to interact with a human. In fact, that might be one of the another chief appeal of the self-checkout tills that they don't have to interact with anybody, right? Because we, we are a society now that is 
obsessed with screens and phones, right? You see this all the time. People talk about this all the time. Old people always say this, right? That like 30, 40 years ago, right? People would talk to each other. You'd randomly go up and speak to other people and just have a chat, right? People don't do that anymore. Instead, everybody's glued their eyes to their fucking phones, right? Because a lot of people are addicted to the dopamine they get from scrolling through social media and scrolling through their phone or playing some mobile game. And it turns out that what they have done is replace that. They've used that dopamine to replace social interactions. And it's a serious problem. We have people who prefer interacting with robots and electronics and their iPhone than they do with actual human beings. And it actually creates a lot of the kind of political decay that we see. You know, this is a political channel, as you can see, which is why it might be confusing that I'm talking about this. But there is a reason. It creates a lot of the political decay because you have a lot of people, especially on the left, right? But it's true, I think, on both sides to, to some degree, who, for example, always impute bad motives. I always hear that people on the right wing in this country and in America are horrible, racist, bigot, fascists who hate the poor and some such, right? And the reason a lot of these lefties think this is because they are permanently online. They don't even interact with right wingers. What they do is they go online and they insulate themselves in their lefty bubbles and they all just kind of feed each other the same bullcrap. But I mean, let's let, but let's let her carry on and, and say a little bit more. And the problem for me now as well is that if they're going to start charging more money because they say the price uh, of everything has gone up and if they're going to start charging um, excessively higher prices, in my view, uh, I think they should at least provide somebody to serve you. And I don't mean that in a, in, a, in, a, in a nasty way. I just mean that if you go into a shop, you should expect to be treated by somebody who works there, uh, who will welcome you, uh, who will be good and nice to you, uh, and who will make you feel uh, as though they actually want your custom. I don't get that sense from an awful lot of places I go now. As you, were you were talking about prices, incidentally. I did wonder, you know, maybe we should get a discount for using the self-service tools. Well, After again... All, you know, we're saving them stuff. Yeah, money. well, exactly right. I mean, I'm all in favour of... There you go. There she says it right there. She's right. Maybe you should get a discount for using the self-checkout tills. That could actually inadvertently destroy the self-checkout tills in a way because you would end up with a situation where there'd probably be hefty queues at the self-checkout till because people are trying to get discounts on all of the goods they buy, which would mean that all the normal checkout tills would be freed up. And then it might lead to more people returning to the checkout tills because the self-checkout tills have queues that are just too big. And so it could actually work in helping the cashiers, right? But again, it goes back to the point. The These guys, right, no, no offense to these two, right? But they are old, right? Let's be honest, these are old. And so they have the kind of old method of thinking, right? Which is not necessarily a bad thing, which is that they want to interact with people, right? They want to feel interactions with human beings. They want to go into a supermarket and interact with somebody and have them go, you know, hi, have a good day. Let us know if you need anything, that kind of stuff, right? They want to feel welcome. A lot of the younger generations don't want this. They don't want staff to talk to them. They want staff to leave them alone. Because they don't want to engage in any social interactions. This is why you see a lot of staff these days who are a lot more miserable. Because before, when these guys were younger, right? A lot of staff had to be kinder and nicer, right? They had to be more joyous because it was a bad look on the, on the company for them to go around looking miserable. Because everybody was interacting with them and paying attention to them. And, and as a result of of shoppers interacting with them and having conversations with them, right? And and all this kind of stuff, right? It actually made these people a lot happier, right? But what happens now is you have workers who are basically just in whatever mood they're in, right? None of them ever have a good, they don't have a good mood. They don't try and make you feel welcome. They just, because they know you're not watching how they behave because you don't want to interact with them anyways. They just behave how they want to behave and it creates a bit of a worse environment. I also want to briefly touch on automation as, as a thing about this, because automation is also a big issue here, is, is that a lot of people are afraid that not just cashiers, but a lot of these low-skilled jobs are going to be replaced entirely by robots. And obviously, we know that a lot of people, the cashiers, right, the people who work at Tesco, rely on this for their livelihood, right? And, and they are afraid that they're going to be replaced, and that eventually robots are going to run everything. We're seeing cars that will drive themselves, self-service checkout tills. Robots are doing everything now. Right, I went to a restaurant recently where a robot served served me as a waiter. Right, so the robot bought the food over. Right, so they're replacing the fucking waiters now. Right, robots are replacing everybody. They're replacing all of the low skilled jobs, and working class people are worried about the consequences this will have for them and their livelihoods, and they're right to worry. Because they're being replaced. <laughs> they're being replaced potentially with this kind of stuff. And my, my point on the whole self-checkout tools is this. I don't mind them being there. 
I don't mind them being there, but like we have to avoid the slippery slope of automation. That is one big thing. The social interaction stuff is something we have to address on a societal social level. It's not something we can address at Tesco's. But in terms of automation, I think that the self-checkout tool should be allowed to stay. But there should be a clear boundary placed. It shouldn't be allowed to be the beginning stages of the slippery slope to automation. That's what it shouldn't be. I don't mind them just because it is, it would like it is kind of annoying to have to wait in a in a line when you have like five items because there are people in front of you, you have like 80, 90 pounds worth of stuff and you've got to wait for them in a line, right? It's long and annoying and it's not more convenient. In a lot of cases, it is really not more convenient for you to use the checkout tills than it is to use the self-checkout. And so I do agree with these things existing because it's actually like it can be better for consumers. It can be better for you depending on how much time you have. If it's a time sensitive situation, you'd rather use the self-service checkout because there tends to be not that big of a queue there. But yeah, I mean, I thought I would touch on on these issues, right? Because people just look at this and they see this kind of minor debate. They see this as like a minor issue in their lives. And in a way it is, on the surface it is, but in a lot of ways, this is a bigger issue than a lot of people realize, right? Because it says a lot about where we're heading. We as a society have decided for some reason we are replacing human beings with robots. That's what we're doing, right? Let's be honest about this. What we're doing, we're doing it in our social lives. And apparently now big companies are doing it as well. They're replacing their low-skilled workers with robots. And I think that is something that definitely needs to be addressed, right? The issues of automation, the issues surrounding high level of social anxiety that we seem to have across the West, frankly, need to be addressed. They really do. But let me know what you lot think about this down below. Do you disagree with anything I said? Do you think I should even be talking about this? Long-time viewers of the channel. Is this something I should even talk about or do you think this was a waste of time to listen to? Let me know. And uh, yeah, please remember to like and subscribe, people, and see you.